Alrighty guys, as you can bring you to the Dragon Ball Legends TLP guide video for season 76. So last season we did end at rank 1462, securing us that juicy 1000 CC and also gaining us a spot in the top cut percentile. We did test out the new baby trunks and I have to say he is an amazing green unit for all of his tags. So it's not surprising that Toshi has somewhat clipped his wings and has placed this man into B tier, but hey, it could be worse. It could be C tier, right? So I am going to go ahead and give him the recommendation for running it, especially if you need a filler green unit. This guy is absolutely amazing. And before we continue on with the video, remember there will always be timestamps down below. That way you guys can go ahead and get to where you need to go. So the first thing I'm going to tell you guys is our general tips. The biggest thing in TOP that will help you out for all of your units, you can do this individually, is your friendship rank importance, right? You want all of your units, especially your TOP squad, to be at friendship rank 10. And the reason why is because you can look at their TOP stats right here. And if we look at the regular stats, there is a clear difference, right? In the TOP stats, you're going to see that increase. And that's because of the friendship rank. Now, this friendship rank only affects the TOP game mode. It's not going to affect it in PvP or any other PvE events or anything like that. But... It's so helpful in this game mode and it's especially noticeable with the key restore speed because that key restore speed does dictate your attack order. That's this way to get your friendship rank up is doing the let's fight event. You get three of these a day. This is specific for one of your units. Make sure you guys are doing them. The other way you can do this is go into story mode. You're going to go into part six. It's going to be chapter one and book eight is the stage that you are looking for right here. This one's a little bit better in, in one way than the let's fight event is that you can bring in three of your units and farm three units friendship rank at once, but it takes a longer amount of time. This is a lot more tedious, not necessarily recommended by me. And the last thing regarding friendship rank is you want to farm this specific equipment right here. This is my friendship rank farming team, as you can see right here, and they all have the same equip on each of these characters. And it's literally repeated. These equip stack. So if we go ahead and take a look at it, you're going to be getting an increased percentage exact by 3% this is the max slot to friendship points gained. And obviously this effect stacks for all of the units, right? So even if you're going into the Let's Fight event, you're only bringing in one unit. All of your bench units are going to be still giving that bonus to the friendship point uh, friendship points gained. Uh, you can get this from the equipment metal shop. It's kind of it, it's somewhat annoying to roll. You don't need a perfect roll like I do right here. You don't need all three red slots, but just something so you can go ahead and get a little bit of a head start when it comes to the friendship rank grind. So next tip I'm going to give you is put equipments on your TOP units. It's separate, it's separate from PVP. There's specific TOP equips that you need to get. It's going to be in the rare metal shop and there's a TOP specific tab right here and you're going to want to equip these gold equips. These gold equips are probably the best ones in here and they're going these ones specifically have equip conditions this one's for melee type this one's for range type this one's for defensive type and then the videl one is for support type now you also want this explosive clash this one has the worst equip condition because you need your unit at seven stars or above obviously not all of you guys are going to have your top units seven stars or above so this one is an optional one um this one is i i think you should put this on everyone there's no equipment conditions for this one. It's just a buff to your base health. Health is very important in the game mode, obviously, right? Because that's going to go hand in hand with your defense. And of course, these are the filler equips that if you don't have, um, if you don't have your unit at six stars to actually equip the explosive clash, you're going to want to go ahead and get one of these. Uh, their equip conditions are a lot more lenient. This one's just for like yellow. And then you have ones down here that are for range type, melee type, etc., etc. So the last bit of advice I would offer is if you want your unit to have extra defense on top of friendship rank, on top of the equips, you can arts boost their special to get a little bit of an increase to defenses. Now, this is a last resort, I would say, because these materials are so rare in game that you're probably just saving these for your best PvP units. And I would continue to do that. The next thing we're going to talk about is our pathing right here. And as you can see, it's pretty much the same format right here. The red circle tiles are going to be the most important ones. The game does reward you based off of a win streak bonus. This is going to be part one and two of the boards that you will see into video format later on in the season. Um, if you guys do deviate from the blue pathing, I'm always okay with that. I'm never going to be like, no, you should not do that for so and so reason. I usually, my, my reasoning behind the blue pathing is I'm trying to go for the more easier fights and then we'll increase the difficulty once we get to those 
encircled fights, right? Because those are the win streak bonuses on the 5th, 10th, 15th, 20th, 25th. You want to maintain that win streak bonus all the way through. Remember, if you land on a yellow tile, if you land on a green tile, if you end up losing a fight and get set back to tiles, you're messing up your win streak bonus. And that's probably like the biggest no-no that you want to do in this game mode. But as you can see right here on the second half of the board, I actually have two two of the, the 20th fights circled right here, right? Because one of them is definitely going to be an easy fight. It's against this, uh, well, you have the Future Trunks on there. This is an OG fight right here. I have no issue with this fight at all, but the only issue here being is that it's a three-fifth stage, right? So we're probably not going to be getting the maximum yield for points right there. Um, that's why I do have it circled on to the right of it. In the green, this is going to be the more difficult stage, but some of you guys may want to avoid it altogether because even though this is sure to get you more points, this Rosé right here is going to super attack you and there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, there's key restore speed tiles right here, so you can maybe, if you're if you're sneaky, you have a purple unit, you have a super attack with them, and you're able to go ahead and attack before the Rosé, maybe you can get him before then, but this guy has a really high key restore speed, he gets 100% to his special move on the very first turn, it's more than likely he is going to super attack you right off rip. If you have any other answers for it, then definitely go for the stage. If you want to just avoid that super attack altogether, just go for the one to the left of it that I do have in red. All right, so now we're going to go and move on to our pathing tips. The first fight that you encounter, of difficulty at least, it, it, I think it actually is the first fight of the, of the entire season though that you're going to land on, is this TOP stage. So the biggest threat here is that green TN. You want to get the green TN because on turn two, he will super attack you and stun you. Easily the biggest threat of this team. Next is Ginyu Force. This is a relatively easy stage. Um, the only advice that I'm going to give here is kill the birder slash Jace tag unit first because once they do do a cover change for any of their allies, they end up buffing the squad. Next is this free to play stage. Another pretty common stage right here. The only threat that I would say is the super boo. Um, the purple super boo on turn three will stun you. Next, we have this god key stage. So I'm going to go ahead and advise you guys to kill the Whis first because as a start of turn two, he will stun you. He has like the same ability as Whis basically, or I mean, not as Whis, as the green Beerus. So target him first. All right, so next we do have this Krillin stage. The, the biggest threat here is going to be that tag Krillin and Gohan unit. Take them out first. You don't have to worry about the Namek Saga Krillin or the Saiyan armor Krillin um, because his Zenkai counterpart does have the solar flare accessible to him, but the Unzenkite version does not. Next, we do have this future stage, Trunks. You need to kill that Blue Legends Road Trunks first. At 100%, without a doubt, because if you kill any of the, there's two Gohan units here. If you kill a Gohan unit, he automatically gets 100% to a super. He has the potential to super attack you two times right here. Don't let that happen. So next, we do have God Key, but with Hit. So for this fight, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go for the Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken Goku first because he will super attack you, start a turn two, high key resource speed, all that good stuff. And in that same first turn, if you can kill the Green Beerus, that would be optimal because on the start of turn two, he will stun you. From there, it's just pretty much just easy going. Next, we have uh, the Namek Saga stage. Um, again, I'm going to go ahead and say go for the tag unit first and then go for the LFs. So if you can kill the, uh, the tag unit and then the LF Frieza in turn one, beautiful, because at the start of turn two, that Frieza does debuff you. Um, and then after the Frieza, of course, then go for the Namek Goku. So next is this hybrid stage. So this is a stage we've been seeing a lot lately too. Um, biggest threat is the Goten, right? So the Goten, you, he will super attack you on turn two. Just get him before he does that. He does have a high key restore speed. You're going to have to finish him off in turn one. So now if you do come across this stage and you're going against the Ultra Rosé, you want some kind of insurance against that super attack. What I recommend for the team we're going to be using is if, say, like I do want to bring in blue tanks to that fight because there's multiple reds, I would position my green Piccolo like this. That way he's going to specifically cover change for either of my blue units right here, right? So if I have so if I have my Piccolo positioned like this, both of those blue units are going to get covered by him. This Piccolo, in his ability, he's able to cover change against special move arts attack, right? So by doing but just by having him right here, I'm able to make sure that he doesn't attack or that he doesn't get that super off on my blue units. You want some sort of insurance like that. Next is this future stage. This, one, this one's going to be a hard stage nonetheless, but um, what you do want to do is you want to get my before the end of turn two. 
because at the end of turn two is when she's going to go ahead and she does her flashbang grenade. She's going to stun one of your units. And as for the last fight that we are going to be challenging here is going to be regeneration. There's only the two ultras and I don't think they're the worst ultras to go up against because there's also the fusion warrior stage and that has the double Vegitos and both. I think the ultra Vegito and the LF blue Vegito um, they both had the chance to double attack and that, that's a lot of damage that can easily just start adding up right so I think we're we're okay with going after this all right so first thing we're going to be talking about is sagas from the movies I do have the current rank one player at the time of recording um, and this is what he's using right here primarily a green and yellow based setup which I do think can be very powerful for the season right here so i'm basically taking his team and what i would make like if, if i had to take his team and make my own variation of it with any replacement units this is basically what i would use right here one big boon of this team or a couple actually is the fact that this zenkai cooler he's being used everywhere on the leaderboard you're seeing him everywhere he's in z tier for a zenkai unit to be z tier you almost think it's a mistake and he has a pretty good kit that will go on in the later segment of the video but he is a solid pick right here if you're itching to use this guy because he's a Zenkai Z tier unit Sagas from the movies Frieza Force any of those two will work perfectly and speaking of so Sagas from the movies you're also able to go into A tier and you will find that Ultra Golden Frieza if you did pull him you can use him right here even if you didn't pull him and you still want a strong purple you can go into S tier and pick up this purple Bojack right here who's going to be guaranteeing super attacks every single fight which is still very beneficial you got support from the the or the turles right here you also have support from this thousand remember this guy will pocket one specific cooler unit so you can see right here he's highlighting that zenkai cooler if i wanted to go ahead and put this guy right there he's going to be pocketing that yellow cooler right and then as for my backup units the big difference here is that i have a healer on the team this guy's pretty solid for hills there's he's not the only healer either right like you can use some other healers if you go into c tier there's a pseudo healer here in the form of the revival Gohan. He can be a healer. It's only by 1%. Okay, it's not a lot, but it's still something, right? It's still anything. If you do want to pick up the any of these C tier units, don't be scared of using at least one to two. Even three, three might be pushing it, but that's still more than fine to actually do. And then in B tier, you also have the Gamma too. This guy's a healer for the squad as well. He's he has a pretty solid kit all around. So. This team usually always makes it on my roster for the top five just because of how many replacements there can possibly be. So next team we're going to be showing off here is the Frieza Force slash Lineage of Evil. And same thing as last time, I'm going to be showing you a very similar team to the one shown on the right hand side. But if I had to make some replacements and stuff like that, right? So similar to Sagas, you have Green Zenkai Cooler who is Z tier at your disposal. So definitely be sure to utilize him as well as the new Ultra Frieza if you do have him. But easily the best unit in this tag has to be the T.O.P. Yellow Frieza, who is unfortunately in C tier. But there's a reason why he's in C tier, right? It's because he's getting 100% to his special move just right off rip. And not only that, he's getting a second one at the start of the force so early at the start of the fight. He's getting 100% start of battle. And then at the start of the fourth turn, if there's two or more enemies remaining, you're getting 100% to your special move gauge again, and you're upgrading it to the ultimate. That is absolutely insane. You're going to have so much damage here, and especially when you combo that with the fact that you're Zenkai buffing him too with this guy, because he's giving the Zenkai buff to yellow tag lineage of evil. This guy's also getting a possible guaranteed super attack upon mitigating a blast arts attack, right? So you have a ton of damage right here. This guy's able to stun right off rip first turn. Your enemy can't do anything about it this guy's providing support as you can see from the highlighted tiles right there from the row just directly below him and then i also have a safety net for this team as in the form of a healer right the revival frieza at the end of turn ally attack frieza force or lineage of evil in range you restore health by two percent that's really really solid um i think this team is i think i was just talking about how this team used to be one of the top dogs in top and that it should be coming back and then here it is they're back in the top five so the next thing we're going to be taking a look at is super warriors on the right hand side we do have the rank 10 player rocking the squad um we do have a standard setup right here we all know the red tn has amazing debuffs applies them to the entire enemy board blue tn is pretty much there for his dps abilities right or his damage per turn um you also have the zenkai krillin right here i really like this guy a lot just because of the fact that he has the solar flare available to him 
and then you, of course you have the EX Yellow Piccolo on back. Or t I would. This person doesn't have him, but I would put this guy just on backup. Even though I always talk smack about his his damage, or I talk smack about his defense, this healing utility is still worthwhile, right? To at least have him as a backup member. You don't have to bring him into every fight. But one of the big things that I like to do here is I swap out that green EX TN for the green Sparking TN because this guy also has the Solar Flare, and he actually it, it's even better for him because not only is at start of turn two, he's getting that solar flare off. He's also getting 100% to a special move. I would say the biggest con for this team is the lack of replacements. Like, there's not a whole lot of units you can use here. Like, if you want to set out one of the purples from Yajirobe, I'm not going to, like, I'm not going to, you know, criticize you for it. The only thing is that he's not buffing Super Warriors. I guess that's his, his only downfall there. But, but yeah, there's a limited selection is basically what I'm saying. All right, so the next thing we are going to be talking about is minions. So we have the rank 95 player right here. And I was actually like heavily debating on what I should put for this fourth slot because it looked like there was not a whole lot of options for this fourth slot right here. But I did end up landing on minions right here. Of course, I'm going to give you the same spiel as I usually do. Your blue and yellow Cybermen are the butter or your bread and butter combo right here right because this yellow cyberman is healing all ally tag minions by four percent this guy's super attacking every single fight sometimes he's going to be super attacking two times in a single fight right depending on what fight you're on the the thing with this team though i think what really made me want to put them in fourth place is because a lot of the minions all the minions you see listed right here are in s tier these are a combination of minions slash Frieza Force. So say you want to build a Frieza Force team, don't necessarily have all the components. You can mix and match some of these here. Let me, we'll be right back. I'm gonna actually go ahead and make that Frieza Force minions team for you real quick. All right, so for a minion slash Frieza Force team, this is probably what we're going to be going for right here. Most of these units are going to be in S tier. Um, obviously some of them, like the Frieza Force specific units are going to be in C tier, like this, this Frieza. We just talked about this yellow Frieza being one of the best units in TOP for DPS. This Frieza is going to be healing right here for it's Frieza Force or Lineage of Evil, right? So it's going to still be counting for these minion members. I also like this green naval right here because he does have a small heal for the out for Frieza Force or event exclusive or Frieza Saga. So you're still getting that synergy right here. Like this guy's able to buff those bottom three right there. Or I, I think he actually has a cover change for them, not a buff. Yeah, but he's also able to heal himself and stuff like that, right? This this purple pool, he's able to buff ally tag Frieza Force or tag minion, right? So you're still getting that synergy right there. You're still getting what you need out of the minion that you do have and you can still sub in some of these uh, Frieza Force characters even if you wanted to put like for example if you wanted to go into C tier and pick up someone like uh, of the caliber of Goku and Frieza you can use this guy right you could still use it he's not going to be buffing Frieza Force himself but it's still a phenomenal unit to have on your squad right for example if you don't have the Ultra Frieza boom you put in the Goku Frieza right that that this will work and last but not least we are going to be using regeneration unfortunately at the time of recording i did not find a single regeneration player within the top 1000 but we're going to go ahead and start from the top start from z tier talk about what units that i'm going to be using kind of like my mindset behind the units so in z tier we are picking up this yellow metal cooler he's kind of become a staple right here i don't think he's the greatest yellow for the team but for points he definitely is right you could also pick up this baby vegeta if you really wanted to i wanted to but then i kind of like looked at the board kind of saw what fights we're going to be facing up against and opted to go ahead and leave him behind unfortunately so next we go into s tier we are picking up two purple units because there is a couple fights where there's multiple greens that we do have to take care of some fights where i might even be okay super baby 2 boo tanks you guys are going to take a step back here bring out both of those purples this cell i like him a lot he has that full board debuff this Boo Tanks or Boo Han is what I should say actually. He's not the best, but he is range type. He's S tier and he also has mitigation. He has the bubble shield right here, so he can mitigate a blast or a strike arts, which isn't bad. His Z ability does suck though. As for A tier, a lot of our units do usually come from A tier. We are picking up the Buhan as our designated red unit. If we did have stars, I might consider using this guy instead of the Buhan. And you guys might too. Especially, again, if you guys do have the stars, this guy's a higher tier. And he's basically going to be doing the same job. He is pretty good from what I've heard. But back to A tier, we are picking up two greens here. The 
this Zenkai Green Piccolo, who has again been kind of a staple right here. He has he has decent damage. He has good tanking. I think that's the biggest thing. He has really good tanking, and I do have interest in his ability to cover change on special arts attacks. Plus, he's also Zenkai buffing green regeneration units. And because of that Zenkai buff, we are going to be picking up this Demon King Piccolo right here. He does have good damage, he has good debuffs, and he's able to form his special move relatively quickly. At the fourth turn, he gets 30% to his special move gauge. But I would not blame you guys if you wanted to sub out the Demon King Piccolo, because he's a free-to-play unit, right? So you can't expect the greatest things out of him if you want to swap him out with the Baby Trunks, because as you guys do know, we used Baby Trunks last season, and he blew me out of the water. I, I would go as far as saying that he's an S tier, almost breaking into Z tier for TOP. He's a phenomenal unit. But of course, in B tier, we do have Boo Tanks, our guaranteed super attacker. He is not going anywhere. And then in C tier, we have our Super Baby 2 for our heals. If you guys need any replacements for the regeneration team that we will be using for this season, let me know in the comment section down below. So now let's talk about the new characters for the final segment of the video. We have the TOP, or well, the Ultra Frieza maximum stats right here does have a, a so many tags, right? Frieza Force, Lineage, Powerful Opponent, and Sagas from the movies has the blue card, the ultimate. Wait, let me see if that Curious, curious Source speed is actually kind of lacking. 2300 is a little bit rough. Hopefully, that's alleviated a bit in the kit. First ability, 85% to damage inflicted, 20% to damage reduction, and nullifies attribute downgrades three times. And on attack, you get 15% to own damage for one turn, cannot be cancelled, 5% to own special move gauge, so that's already, what, 5, 10, 15, 20? 20% right there for the first four turns, right? I'm assuming that's on every attack. And you also inflict the enemy with attribute downgrade plus 15% to damage received. And after receiving an attack, one health is 50% or below, you restore health by 5%, and boom, you get straight up 100% to special move gauge. This is something, I, I mean, this is not necessarily bad, but it's really restrictive, right? Especially if you have a really like healing based team where you're not really hitting below 50% HP. This is something that you're gonna have we are gonna have to look out for when this guy's on the enemy team. Once he's below 50% HP. Uh, before receiving a blast arts attack, you do a cover change. It is health gated by 30%, which is always unfortunate. Uh, start of the first turn, you activate special action, his green card. 15% to damage inflicted for 2 turns, 15% to strike damage inflicted for 2 turns, and 70% to key recovery. Wow. Yeah, so th there he goes. That's the alleviation that we were looking for right there. 50% um, to special engage charge rate for 1 turn, and at the start of the 3rd turn, own health is 7. Oh, I don't like another health gate. I don't like that at all. Own health is 70% or lower. A little bit more lenient, I guess. You activate um, the green card, 30% to damage inflicted, 50% to key recovery. You upgrade your special move, and you cancel attribute downgrades at abnormal conditions. And lastly, let's take a look at the ultra ability. It is based off powerful opponent team teammates. You get 5% to damage inflicted, 5% to key recovery, and before receiving a special move, ultimate, or awakened arts, minus 20% to damage received instantly, and this effect will activate even if an ally performs a cover change. So does he just eat it? Does he automatically... I, I'm a little bit confused about that. Um, it looks like... I don't know if he just automatically eats it, he gets targeted by it or not, but it just... He gets, 20, he gets damage mitigation on it, I suppose. I don't think he's that good for TOP. Honestly? Like, after the season, if you guys are running LOE and you guys are... This guy's presumably going to be in C tier. Yeah. I think Goku Frieza is still your go-to purple unit, if I'm being real honest with you guys. And so for the last unit we're going to be taking a look at is this Zenkai Cooler. So not necessarily a new unit, but definitely a new Zenkai right here. Um, so he does have a key resource speed at Friendship Rank 2 of 2,500. That's solid. That can increase with Friendship Rank 10. Has the regular blue card right here. First ability, 40% to blast damage, 30% special move damage, 15% to damage reduction, 15% to special move gauge charge rate for one turn. At the start of the second turn, you heal by 2%, 30% to damage inflicted, 40 to key recovery, and 15% to special move gauge. After receiving an attack, self 10% to special move damage inflicted and 10% to special move gauge. So if you're getting hit every turn, I mean, ideally, you don't want that to just be happening to one unit. You could possibly get just 40% off of one fight. That's possibly massive. At the start of the first turn, activate special action, inflict heavy bleed for two turns, inflict attack for once. So he's stunning the enemy too. 
and you also debuff them to 20% to damage received for 2 turns, attribute downgrade minus 40 to cube recovery for 2 turns, and you cancel their buff effects. And on special move arts activation, you get 30% inflicts attribute downgrade 30% to damage received for 1 turn, cancels buff effects, and on special move arts hit, you're inflicting heavy bleed for- wow, this is actually really solid. Like, no wonder why so many people are using him, especially comp this kit combined with the fact that he is Z tier currently. That is massive, plus he's Zenkai buffing green powerful opponent for whatever green powerful opponent units you're going to be using. He's good. He's actually really good. I could also imagine like a powerful opponent team, you're using this guy, you're using the Rosé. If you want one of those C tier units, he's going to be super attacking, he's getting the Zenkai buff. This... This is a strong unit. I think this is a really strong Zenkai unit. All right, so that's going to go ahead and wrap it up for today's guide video. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns relating to TLP for this season or just in general, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. If you guys do enjoy the content, make sure you guys leave a like and maybe even consider hitting that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Later!